Visualization of a discrete algorithm for Morse Smale complexes. We first illustrate the construction of the Morse Smale complex into a simple 1D example. This is a cell complex comprised of edges and vertices with scalar function values at the vertices. In our visualization, the height of each vertex corresponds to its function value. Each cell is labeled with an index. Even indices for zero-dimensional cells and odd indices for one-dimensional cells. In the first stage of the algorithm, the discrete gradient field of this cell complex is constructed. Every cell is uniquely paired in a gradient arrow representing flow in the negative gradient direction. These cells are processed in order of increasing function value, simulating a flood fill of basins. The discrete gradient arrows indicate the direction of the steepest descent. First, cell 0, and next, cell 8, are marked critical, since they have no coface of lower function to be paired with. Being index 0 critical cells, they are minima, and we display them with blue spheres. Next, cell 2 is paired with cell 1, indicated by a gradient arrow pointing from 2 to 1. Similarly, cell 6 is paired with 7, and 4 with 3. Finally, cell 5 is marked critical as the maximum, and we display it with a red edge. When all the cells have been paired or marked critical, we have a discrete gradient vector field. In the second stage of the algorithm, we compute the connectivity of the morse smale complex by tracing gradient paths downwards from the maxima. In 1D, this trivially connects each minimum to the two adjacent maxima. The cells of the 1D Morse male complex are nodes, minima and maxima, that are the boundary of the arcs, the gradient paths between them. In this case, the maxima and minima partition the cell complex into monotonic regions of gradient flow, colored as yellow and green on the x-axis. In two dimensions, a cell complex is a polygonal mesh of cells of dimension 2 through 0 corresponding to quads, edges, and vertices of the mesh. The function is given as scalar values at the vertices of the mesh. In our visualization, the z-coordinate of these vertices corresponds to the function value. We can consider the mesh and function together as a terrain surface. Just as in 1D, in the first stage, the algorithm assigns discrete gradient vectors by processing the cells in increasing order of function value. This assigns each vertex and edge a vector arrow pointing towards one of its cofaces. As cells are processed, they are either assigned a gradient arrow, shown with yellow arrows, or marked as critical. The regions that grow constructs the ascending manifold of each minima. A new cell is added to the manifold by adding its vertex and lower star of faces. Each vertex is added in order of function value. The critical number 1 cells that separate the number 2 regions are saddles. We display the saddles with green bars. Critical number 2 cells are maxima, and they are displayed with red squares. In a discrete gradient field, the critical points ultimately have dimension corresponding to their index of criticality. Hence, critical vertices are minima, critical edges are saddles, and critical quads are maxima. Once the discrete gradient vector field is defined everywhere, we have a partition of the domain that visually indicates the ascending manifolds of each minima. Taken as a complex, these arcs partition the domain into the morse smale complex, a structure which allows the partitioning of the domain with one cell per minima. Within each cell, all flow leads to the minima. Next, to build the morse smale complex, the descending manifolds of saddles are computed. These appear as light blue arcs tracing a path from saddles to minima. Together, the collection of descending and ascending arcs from the saddles partition the domain into more smale cells. These cells always form a topological quadrilateral, with vertices having one minima 
one maxima, and two saddles. The flow behavior within each cell is monotonic flow from the maxima to the minima. Finally, we show the same algorithm constructing the morse smale complex into a more typical height field. The same approach of the first, constructing the discrete gradient field and then partitioning the domain, can be extended to 3D domains and beyond.